Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a rowdy couple in love that loves react to some Ruby. We're rowdy for Ruby. Rowdy for Ruby. And so this is season four, episode four. If you want all of our Ruby reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. We got a link to our Patreon. We can get early ad-free access to our Ruby reactions and a bunch of other reactions as well. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. You can see what uh, Blake's sister's like. Mm -hmm. I also like, they keep hammering home that Ozpin is dead. So he can't be dead. <laughs> That's just it, I'm like, so he's absolutely not dead. Why, do you think Cinder really thinks that she killed him? Or she was lying because she knows if she didn't? I think Cinder really believes it okay. or has to believe it. Mm. I don't think she's knowingly covering anything up. Okay. That's a big pitchfork. Yeah, it is. Professor Oswald. Okay, so you, your reflection does talk back. Never mind. I was about to make fun of him. Oscar, you be careful with those tools. Is what this the a flashback? hell? Or is this what? What just happened? I don't know. So weird to see her scared. Mm-hmm. What you see? <laughs> They're wasted. <laughs> oh, hey, she laughed. Shaolong, uh, please join us. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, pull up a chair. Please pull up a chair. I'm good. So what are you doing here? 
Despite popular belief, teachers do have a life outside the classroom. <laughs> Professor Goodwitch is working round the clock to restore Beacon to its former glory. But Mistral wasn't built in a day, and we all need some rest from time to time. Yeah, <laughs> look, let's not worry about that right now. So, there we were, standing in the auditorium, <laughs> Looking at Crow wearing a I don't know how we keep forgetting her name when her name is Good Witch. It's time to work on our landing <laughs> <Yep>. strategy. <laughs> the Broadway twins have always been interesting, to say the least. That sure didn't seem to stop young Ty. <laughs> hey, come on, man. She's right here. Oh, please. She's a mature young woman. If she can handle combat, she can handle a few jabs at her old man. That's not the issue, Pete. And besides, she's still a teenager. She is also in the room and can be directly spoken to. Hmm. Yeah, Yang, there you go. I Bravo. I think I've been through enough to be considered an adult at this point. It's the old Yang. Adult or not, you still got a long way to go before you're ready for the real world. Oh my gosh, does every father figure just have the same three condescending phrases? <laughs> <laughs> but we only use them when we mean it. Is that so? As a matter of fact, it is so. If you honestly think that you're ready to go out there on your own, huh, well, I guess you lost some brain cells along with that arm. Oh. Damn. You jerk! <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, yeah. Talking about the Goliath in the room. <laughs> Her dad knows her. Yeah. Good job. Oh, show look. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, why haven't you tried on the arm? Oh, yes, yes. A piece of Atlas technology being given out like that is rare indeed. Not to mention the effort it took to deliver it here. It seems a great many people want to see you return to normal. Yeah, um, Yang. Scared. Okay. Helps yeah, to admit it. He's natural. He's talking about me getting back to normal. Mm. And I appreciate it. But... This is normal now. It's just taking me a while to get used to it. Well, normal is what you make of it. What is that supposed to mean? Do you want me to just pretend like nothing happened? I lost a part of me. A piece of me is gone, and it's never coming back. You're right. It's well. not coming back. I think he knows that because he lost his wife. But that doesn't have to stop you from becoming who you want to be. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Your Yang Shao Long. My sunny little dragon. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you put your mind to. Yep. So whenever you're ready to stop moping <laughs> and get back out there, I'll be there for you. Good job. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Fear is like any other emotion. It comes and goes. It's all in how you handle it. Why, even I find myself wrestling with that emotion from time to time. Really? You? He's afraid of mice. <laughs> disease and famine! <laughs> and don't even get me started on their tails. <laughs> Hairless, simply unnatural. Oh, good. Safe. There's no mice here right now. <laughs> There's no mice here. <laughs> good night. Thanks for having us over. Anytime. You're always welcome. It may be a while before we return. There is still much work to be done at the school. I hesitate to ask, but. Is there any word from young Miss Rose? Hmm. Not yet. Have you thought about going after her? Trying to bring her home? <sighs> I've got to look after some things. That was good motivation. Got to yeah. put yourself together, Yang. Yep. Assuming it's still there. 
pretty big. Egan Bana. Egan Bana. It's a well-protected village with a popular inn. Which means no camping in the rain. See, everything's gonna be fine. You know, we've had a lot of ups and downs, but things could be a lot worse. I really thought we'd see more grim. As did I. I guess our luck is finally turning around. To Higanbara! To Higanbara! Oh. Ooh, nice. He's watching out after. Nice. like these medieval looking like inns it's always like rainy it's always raining yeah yeah from the woman upstairs red eyes said you wouldn't mind bottom shelf you wouldn't mind <laughs> bottom shelf <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, that's a great line i went ahead and gave you top lucky you Ooh. little flirt <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of like, you know, I'll take the well or whatever, you know. I've never heard of bottom shelf. You wouldn't mind bottom shelf. Like, that's huh. great. Yep. Ooh. Hello, brother. Wait, what? Raven. Oh, sh So. What do you want? Are the white thing? A girl can't just catch up with her family. She can, but you're not. So how about we get on with it? Huh. <laughs> Unless you plan on keeping these coming. Does she have it? Did you know Yang lost her arm? That's not... Rhetorical question. I know you know. It's just obnoxious that you'd bring up family and then carry on like your own daughter doesn't exist. I saved her. Once. Because that was your rule, right? Real mom of the year material. <laughs> I told you Beacon would fall, and it did. I told you Ozpin would fail, and he has. Now you tell me... Does Salem have it? I thought you weren't interested in all of that. I just want to know what we are up against. And which we are you referring to? <sighs> you should come back, Raven. The only way we beat her is by working together. All of us. You're the one who left. The tribe raised us, and you turned your back on them. They were killers and thieves. They were your family. You have a very skewed perception of that word. <laughs> I lead our people now. And as leader, I will do everything in my power to ensure our survival. I saw. The people of Shion saw too. The weak mm. die, the strong live. Those are the rules. Well, you've certainly got someone strong on your side. I've seen the damage. We couldn't have known the Grim would set in as quickly as they did. I'm not talking about the Grim. And I'm not talking about you either. 
If you don't know where the relic is, then we have nothing left to talk about. I don't know where the Spring Maiden is either. But if you do, I need you to tell me. And why would I do that? Because without her, we're all going to die. <laughs> and which we are you referring to? So who's gonna become the Spring Maiden? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Let's get started. Yeah. Let's get to work. A lot going on in that episode. Uh, yeah. First of all, in the beginning, what was happening with Ozpin there? Like, like you said, like was it a flashback or was it like a... Um... Or is he stuck in like a mirror dimension? Yeah, or is he... Yeah, yeah. I, I, so, gotta unpack that. I mean, it's great that like, you know, you were saying it, it, going into it that Ozpin can't be dead, like, so you keep bringing it up. And so, like, there must be like a, you know, I don't know, some kind of horcrux, a part of him still alive. And if so, like, why there at that farm with like, you mm -hmm. know, um, so I, I hope we get more of an explanation on that. If we're supposed to know, we obviously missed some things along the way. Yeah. Also, I love the moment when, um, the dad was just like, you lose your brains as well as like, you know, your arm and the shock look in everyone's face and then Yang rolling with it. Because a lot of times when something, uh, traumatic happens to some, someone or like, you know, like you avoid talking about it and like they they know that like you're you're avoiding talking about it. It's like the gang knows that she lost her arm. Yep. It's not that like, you know, that was the first time like you know that uh that he brought it up. It's like, oh crap, I can't believe you brought it up. Like, cause now I remember that I lost my arm. It's like, no, like you're not avoiding it. You're treating me like you normally would, like like yeah. being getting back to that normal part of it. So I think I think that whole scene, there was so much going on in there, but I want to hear what you think about more of this episode. No, I, I completely agree. I think, you know, it's when somebody's been through a trauma, it's not only not talking about the trauma, but it's also the fact that you care about them so much that you start to handle them with like these kid gloves. You're you're, yeah. you're very careful around them. You treat them like they're fragile. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, that only furthers the narrative in their brain that their life is over, everything has changed, nothing will ever be the same. Yeah. Um, because nothing feels the same. Like they feel like they're babied all the time in addition to grappling with all of the other issues that might be going on from that trauma. Um, so for him to kind of, you know, like give her a little bit of that verbal slap, which everyone in the room felt, we felt it. Like I think I gasped when you yeah. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. And yet it's exactly what she needed in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, this was a great episode for showcasing him as a father. Yeah. Because you see how much he cares about Yang. Um, you see how well he knows her. And so he he cares for her and he gives her space and, and like gives her time. But at the same time, like he does start to kind of like push at that line a little bit and, and try to hit those buttons a little bit um, so that he can get her back to herself. Um, and of course, I think the thing that was most motivating for her was to hear that her father couldn't go after Ruby mm -hmm. and hadn't heard from her all because he had to take care of Yang, um, which was a great father moment for him, too, because you saw how torn he was. Um, and and he's, you know, he knows both his girls. He's he's weighed the odds and, and feels like yeah. well, Ruby can take care of herself in this moment. And Yang definitely can't. So so this is where I'm needed. Um. I also liked in that kitchen scene when Yang was talking about, uh, you know, with the, and her father said that, you know, you gotta get to, uh, a new normal, like normal. And Yang was saying that she lost a piece of herself and that it's never coming back. And like, how do you, like, you know, how do you move on from that? And it's funny, the whole idea of like, I want to get back to normal. Like mm -hmm. we as humans, I think so often tend to have that, like once we get into a, a place of comfort or a place that we're satisfied with, yeah. it's like, this is my normal. This is fixed. This can mm -hmm. never change. But that's so contradictory to life, right? Because because life is always evolving, changing. Uh, our normal is constantly 
moving forward with us, which means that yeah. it too is changing. Um, you know, I, I just think about like looking back on on our life and then my life before that, like life has changed and my my state of normal has changed so many times. Um, yeah. and, and anybody who's older than three, our lives changed dramatically because we went through a pandemic where everything that we thought we understood as normal across the world mm -hmm. changed. Um, you know, so there's, there's like the normal that we think for ourselves that changes, but then there's also the external forces in the world, like that might be in like your community, your job, your school, your, your state, your country, your planet, um, that are changing too, that are going to, to push on that state of normal that you think you have for yourself as well. So, um, it, it's such a, it's such a funny notion that we have and we all have it, but it's, we can't control life. And so we can't control normal. It's not going to stay the way it is for forever. And that's healthy. And that's not always a good thing. Yeah. But ultimately evolving with your states of normal and moving on with them is healthy. Um, so it's it's good to see Yang kind of getting out of her funk. Yeah. And so Ruby and Yang have different mothers. And so we met, uh, so Ruby's mom's passed and Yang, we just met her mom again um, after seeing her like on the train. But I just don't see Raven and Yang's, I've got Yang's dad's name. Um, I know. I don't see them, th them together. I, I, I don't how know how did how that, that happen. happen? <laughs> yeah, because he's like sweet and fun <laughs> and um, caring. Like he's out there taking care of his plants. Like what, yeah. what a juxtaposition to the scene that we just saw of Raven in a bar, insulting her brother, kind of trash talking her family. Like, I don't really want to know about that. I just want the yeah, relic. Like, I don't care about my daughter that lost her arm. Yeah. Like, what a juxtaposition. And then you see him just in his garden and out comes Yang. It's like, let's get to work. I mean, just mm -hmm. the difference between those two was night and day. Um, and and who, okay, so I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Who is she the leader of? It kind of looked like a white fang mask, but I'm like, That's is th that who it was? Because I'm not entirely sure if, the, I, don't, I don't know. I'm missing a piece. I was, I was confused there as well. Um, I, yeah, again, I, I thought it was white fang, but then like, I don't know, when he was talking about like quite a power, like, you know, powerful person or, or, or something like that that you have on your side. And I think, was he talking about Adam there? And, um, yeah, so there's there's some things that there's some pieces that I'm missing as well. Um, but looking forward to kind of guess like you know unpacking it all as it as it goes along. Uh, but she's not in league with Salem, hmm. so she's like going her own path. So I don't know, don't know what Raven's end goal is really. Yeah, and so she's trying to get the relic. The evil chick is trying to get the relic. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest. If I'm supposed to know what the relic is, I forgot. Cause I don't, I'm like, what is Me the too. relic? What is, yeah. what is this thing that they're all trying to get? I'm still trying to figure out who's the other player in this. Cause obviously I don't think when evil chick was saying, you know, what are you playing at the end of the last episode? Yeah. She was referring to Raven. Like I didn't get the mm. sense of that. Cause she was talking about Ozpin and we at least previously yeah. have not really seen a connection between Ozpin and Raven. So that leads me to believe there is a third player in this. Is it Ozpin? Maybe, but if she wasn't talking to Ozpin, we don't know who the other person is. If she's talking to Ozpin, it makes me think that Salem thinks that kind of like in an Obi-Wan Kenobi type of way that- Ooh, she felt the force. She let, uh, no, but she like, <laughs> like how Obi-Wan Kenobi let himself get killed by Darth Vader so that he could become more powerful than you could ever imagine. Um, I wonder if like Salem thinks that like Ozpin for some reason let himself get killed or like, you know, perceived to get Ooh. killed from Cinder. Cause like, uh, Salem's like, there's no way you could kill Ozpin, even with all your powers or whatever. I think that's what she's saying is like, what are you up to? I like Cause then, that. then the next episode, like, it, you know, that was the end of episode three and then episode four, it leads into Ozpin. Yeah. So he is up to something. And I think Salem's like, just like, okay, that doesn't understand it. I'm also really curious. Um, obviously like they're all after the relic, but Raven's brother, whose name I'm forgetting, the one who's looking mm. after Ruby. I'm terrible with names. Um, Crow. Crow, yes, thank you. Which would make sense because there was a crow, crow by Raven. him when he yeah. was, yeah, anyway. Um, so he was uh, looking for spring mm -hmm. and said, you know, without spring, we're doomed. So obviously, yes, if they have an elemental chick on their side yeah. with autumn, then we need an elemental chick on our side. Mm -hmm. Spring is the opposite of autumn. So th that all makes sense. 
Um, but we lost Pyrrha and Pyrrha was the one who should be our elemental reincarnation chick. Mm -hmm. um, so my vote is it's going to be Yang. But it could already be like, they could already be a spring, something that has the spring power or whatever. Cause like the reason that the, they need a Pyrrha for the fall uh, elemental um, season queen or whatever was because the one that ha did have the power, like they kept alive because whoever kills them gets their power. Mm -hmm. And so like, remember we were seeing- um, Oh, and she was already dying. Yeah, she was dying. So they were trying to keep her alive because they didn't want like her to die and then her power to transfer to uh, Cinder. So that's why they had Pyrrha trying to like, you know, suck her life force into there. So there is a spring out there already. And hopefully she's in good health. Yes. <laughs> um, anything else? No, I'm just, I'm excited to see what happens next. You'll have to let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want all of our Ruby reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. Also, I have a link to our Patreon. We can get early ad free access to our Ruby reactions Yay. and uh, all of our other reactions on this channel. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for Ruby volume four, episode four, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.